Hi, I'm Dr. Chen Wen Liu from Adelaide, South Australia. I work at Orthopaedics 360 and today I'd love to talk to you a little bit about kinematic alignment for the knee. I'm a dedicated hip and knee replacement specialist and don't do anything else, so today I thought it would be important for me to talk about one of the techniques that I'm most passionate about, and that is kinematic alignment for the knee. Now, kinematic alignment is something that, although it hasn't been in the mainstream orthopedics recently, it's not a new technique. It was spawned about two decades ago, and certainly it has risen to be one of the more prevalent uh, methods and certainly one of the more controversial and discussed methods in recent times. I have been placing all of my knee replacements with a kinematic alignment for many years and feel that the philosophy behind it is something that resonates with me and my patients. The key difference between a conventional method and a kinematic aligned knee is one where we place the knee to match the patient's native anatomy. Now this is something that we probably need to take a few steps back from and I'll go through how I used to perform a knee replacement prior to kinematic alignment. With a standard technique, what we aim to do with all of our knee replacements was place every knee replacement the same as the next person, which meant we were trying to obtain a straight line from the hip through the centre of the knee through the centre of the ankle that made 180 degrees therefore making every single person's leg perfectly straight. We would also opt to place a foot progression angle. Now you may see people walking with a bit more of a, a duck footed position or pigeon toe. That is the foot progression angle. Now with a foot progression angle of 10 degrees, that was found to be one of the most common foot progression angles in the community. And when we plot a bell-shaped curve of all of the alignments for all of the angles of the knee, we find that the center point of that uh, bell-shaped curve, or very close to it, replicates our aiming point for a standard knee replacement. Now, if we look around at people walking on the street, we can see lots of people walking with bow legs, knock knees, duck feet, and pigeon toes. And actually, most of those patients will not have knee osteoarthritis. Now, as a knee degenerates, we certainly know that you will find that the knee will change some of the angles that it has. That being on the frontal plane, where we look at a knee from the front, on the side, and also in rotation. And that can give a knee more of a bow-legged appearance, more of a knock knee appearance, or could change the foot progression angle of the leg as well. Now, as part of that angulation deformity, we look at how that occurs. And in general, almost all of it occurs due to the loss of cartilage in a particular spot more than any other spot of the knee. Now, when we're looking at a knee x-ray, we can certainly identify on that one view, at that one angle, what that angular deformity is. And in general, we obtain angles of the knee at 90 degrees to one another. In this method, we're looking at performing every knee replacement to match the angles of the knee on 360 degrees around the knee, meaning that we're obtaining measurements of the knee to give us all of the angular differences between patient to patient that we need to apply during surgery. This is kinematic alignment. Kinematic alignment aims to replicate the patient's native anatomy on all of the angular changes that that patient has from when their knee was normal. And what we're doing is we're not just putting the knee back to where it was when the knee is arthritic, but we're changing it back to the position of what a patient's knee was before they had any underlying arthritis. When we change someone's anatomy and we're placing it in a position that they are not born with or used to, we have to make releases, changes and alterations to balance a knee. As part of the technique of a standard knee replacement, we used to have to learn a sequence of releases of the ligaments, tendons, and capsular structures around the knee that enabled us to balance the knee effectively and give someone a well-balanced, good stability knee. With kinematic alignment, we aim not to damage any of those ligaments, tendons, and capsular structures. We aim to place the knee replacement of how that patient was made and how that patient lived their life before they had arthritis. This means that the ligaments, tendons, and capsular structures are left intact. 
Now, there are obviously some exceptions to that rule. The first exception that comes to mind is our patients with severe patellofemoral osteoarthritis, where sometimes some releases need to be made to bring the patella back to its native position. Now, if a patient has lived their whole life with a knee that has been very unusual or anatomically altered, we would aim to position that knee in a different way to match a more synergistic way for the patella to track. Additionally, patients who have had or undergone surgery for their ligaments, especially the collateral ligaments around the knee, or have had a bony procedure, such as a high tibial osteotomy, may require changes to this plan. But if we're looking at the stock standard knee replacement for 95% of the population, we are aiming to leave you in the same position that you were born with. So this means that for our patient who has bow legs, who got more bowed from their arthritis, instead of bringing them back to be perfectly straight, we will bring them back to their original position of how that knee looked when they were 20 years old. Now, whilst you may think that you might notice these angular changes, we find that our patients who have lived their whole life with slightly bow legs or slightly knock knees, when they look down at their knees after the surgery, they feel that we have made their knee perfectly straight. And that sometimes is far from the truth as we have just matched it to how they were born. It's a technique that resonates very much with me, with our philosophy being to keep as much of the soft tissue intact and to not damage or release any of the ligaments, tendons or muscles unless absolutely necessary. And it's something that I feel has given our patients the result that they're looking for. I hope that you found this video about kinematic alignment for knee replacements useful. If you wish to learn a little bit more, please don't uh, hesitate to subscribe or like this video and certainly follow us on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you very much.